Hey, good morning, Calvary. It's Pastor Chad here on uh, Friday, June 5th. It's kind of a special day for me uh, for two reasons. First of all, uh, tomorrow and Sunday, I get to, to preach live uh, to an audience for the first time in a while. So I'm excited about that. Uh, for those of you that are going to join us in person, I'm looking forward to seeing you. For those of you who are going to join us online, I won't see you. You'll get to see me, uh, but it's still going to be great worship. And so I hope you will join us. Uh, the second reason this is a, a special day is because it actually is my birthday, uh, June 5th, and I turned 58 today. So uh, some of you are going, 58? I thought you were a lot older than that. Well, thanks. But uh, anyway, uh, I'm just glad that God has given me another year to live, and He has blessed me tremendously beyond anything I deserve, and I'm thankful for that. So today we are actually finishing our walk through the book of 1 John. Uh, John's letter to the church, his first letter to the church, uh, and, and I get to finish this. So listen to this passage, because uh, the one thing I'm not excited about today is I get to teach on this. You'll understand why in just a moment. Uh, beginning of verse 16, John says, If anyone sees his brother committing a sin not leading to death, he shall ask, and God will give him life. To those who commit sins that do not lead to death, there is sin that leads to death. I do not say that one should pray for that. All wrongdoing is sin, but there is sin that does not lead to death. We know that everyone who has been born of God does not keep on sinning, but he who is born of God protects him, and the evil one does not touch him. Uh, I'm just going to pause right there because uh, I would never choose this passage to teach on, but it's part of the letter. It's one of the reasons that we read the whole uh letters, the whole scripture, all of it, because there's parts that make us really uncomfortable. And honestly, this is a, a hugely controversial passage because nobody is absolutely certain what the Apostle John was meaning by this. Uh, and there have been a lot of different choices made, a lot of interpretations. The Roman Catholic Church took this passage and created the whole idea of mortal and venial sins, that some sins you can get forgiveness for and some you're going to hell for. Uh, that's not what I believe this means, obviously. There's some people who believe that this passage refers to apostasy. That when John was uh, writing to the church, there was a lot of persecution going on, and people were brought before the authorities, and if they denounced Jesus, they got to live, and if they confessed Jesus, they had to suffer and die. And there were people who uh, chose to live and reject Jesus, and, and some people believe uh, that's the sin that leads to death, that, that you're denouncing Jesus and you deny him before men. He's going to deny you before his Father in heaven. Uh, there's uh, other people that uh, just believe that this passage is really referencing what John has repeated throughout the, the whole letter, that anyone who denies that Jesus is the Christ, uh, that's a sin that leads to death, an unbelief sin, if you will. Obviously, if somebody doesn't confess Jesus, they're going to spend eternity in hell. And so that's the sin that leads to death, except we know, hey, we're going to pray for them. We're praying for them all the time. So, uh, and then, uh, or maybe he's talking about a life that is hardcore devoted to sin. An unrepentant, hard-hearted life. Uh, maybe someone like Jesus referred to uh, in the Gospels when he talked about the sin of blasphemy against the Holy Spirit. Since the Holy Spirit is the one who brings conviction on the world, if the Holy Spirit's not convicting you, then you're going to have a hard heart. There's not going to be any compassion. You're going to be rejecting truth, and you're going to be living for yourself uh, in an evil way. And, and maybe that's what John's referring to. We really aren't 100% sure. Some people might believe even that, that this is about consequences of the sin, that some sins lead to death. Uh, suicide is a sin that leads to death, and it's kind of late once that person has committed suicide to be able to pray for them because their fate is already sealed, not by the suicide, but by whether or not they had a life-changing relationship with Jesus Christ. In any case, here's what we know. Uh, we don't want to commit sins that lead to death. We really don't because the one who knows God doesn't live in a lifestyle of sin. He's not practicing sin anymore. That's what John keeps telling us over and over and over in the book, that if you've met Jesus, your life is different and you live differently and you love differently and you speak differently and you encourage differently and you live with faith and with courage and with strength because you're overcoming the temptation. And, and he's saying, look, don't, don't invite death into your life. Uh, we already mentioned suicide, self-murder. You know, there are people who lose hope. 
and, and give in to the temptation that life would be better if uh, they take their own life. Uh, there are people who, who kill their families and their marriages through adultery and uh, abandonment and abuse and addiction. And, and there's death of, of marriages. That's, that's horrible to watch. It's horrible to experience. Uh, there are people who choose uh, death, uh, uh, slow death of their relationships and their values through addiction by giving in to substances. Uh, they, they fill their minds uh, with, with nonsense and they, and they stop seeking God and serving God because they choose to worship and serve uh, an alternative. There, there's so many ways that we invite death into our life through our, our habits, through our practices, through our choices. And John is saying, look, uh, you don't want to do that. Jesus is the truth. He's the one who can change your life. He's the one who can give you hope. And so I want you to hear this as we wrap up this study. No matter who you are, no matter where you've been, no matter what you've done or what's been done to you, God can redeem your life. He can save you. He can heal you. He can restore you. He can forgive you. So I hope that you are not hopeless today. And if you started that way, I pray that God will speak to you and give you encouragement. Here's John's closing statement. He says, And we know that the Son of God has come and has given us understanding so that we may know Him who is true, and we are in Him who is true, in His Son, Jesus Christ. And then again, just because he can't help himself, he says, Little children, keep yourself from idols. Keep yourself from the self-destructive ways of this world because God has a better plan for you. I, I pray today that you are living in God's plan for you. Uh, and remember, if you're a follower of Jesus, the best is still ahead of us. The best is yet to come. God bless and have a glorious day.